You're watching Power Nation. Today on Music City Trucks. We've got Chris Ryan and team from Ryan's Rod and Custom to help get our Bronco body all the way from epoxy to paint. And in the booth we go. And let me tell you, that Caribbean turquoise looks sick. I love that color. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Christ. Now, last time you guys saw the Bronco, we put it on the frame, got all the panels hung. Now it's time to get it from epoxy into bodywork and prime. And at the end of the week, paint and clear. So to help us do that, we brought Chris Ryan and his crew. You guys know them. They do excellent work. Thanks for coming out. Man, anytime. We appreciate you having us here. So I, I brought two of my best guys here, Danny and Dolph. And with the help of Mark, who's the body and paint expert, we'll have this thing shiny by the end of the week. It's going to be a long week. Let's get to it. First thing we need to do is get the roll cage out, and that means cutting the tack welds on the base plates. Gaps, making sure we got our gaps even. We just uh, cleaned out the holes on that side of the hood. Hopefully we brought the side of that hood down some, Dolph, yeah, right? We brought it down pretty good a little bit. I think we'll be all right with that. Well, in a perfect world, it'll be 3 sixteenths and even. We'll get it in first prime by this evening. I hope so. The guys doing the sanding do all the work, but the guy pulling the trigger is the hero. Yeah. Nobody asked who sanded for four days. They said, yeah. who painted who, who that? Who painted that? First, we're going over the epoxy with 180 grit. With the uh, epoxy, we're in the window now and uh, we don't have to sand it before we apply our filler on top of it. But <clears throat> we did not personally assemble this vehicle, so I wanna make sure how straight it is. So it's kind of giving us an idea how straight it is. So when we go over pattern, you can see some of the shiny sticking through, that means we're low right here already. So we know we're gonna need some filler in this area right here. I mean, it will promote adhesion, although we don't have to do this since we have an epoxy on it right now. We've been uh, building hot rods and custom cars and Broncos for 21 years now, so full time. Uh, we've done our first Coyote Bronco about seven years ago, and uh, we did it for a somewhat local guy for us, and uh, it was an experience trying to drop a Coyote in the Bronco for the first time. So as you know, things don't quite fit like they should. So, What do you think about our Bronco? I was pleasantly surprised when I walked in this morning. You know, I know how difficult these are. I know aligning that sheet metal without a roof is very difficult. Um, so when I walked in this morning, I was a little, uh, uh, you know, actually, I was pleasantly surprised, put it that way. So y'all did a jam up job assembling, putting it together, especially panel by panel. So yeah, I think you got a good base here for us to work from. And it's not gonna be too difficult to get, us, get this thing in paint by the end of the week. Well, we certainly appreciate what Chris said about the body being straight. Hey, when you start off with good panels and gaps, you end up with a base that doesn't need a whole lot of attention. So we're addressing the areas that actually need it and then moving on to super build. While I'm mixing the primer, the guys are spreading the last bit of needed filler using a lightweight glazing putty. Now that we've got all the larger areas done, we got to hit all the cracks and crevices. Now that all that's done, it's time to mask up for the first round of polyester primer. Well, the next round of primer is going to be this high build. This is a four to one 
polyester primer. It's basically a sprayable body filler. What's great about this is it's gonna give us a really good level surface to work with and we can block that down and move on to the next step. Here you go, bud. All right, we're gonna mix this super build up. Four parts primer to one part catalyst. The reason why we use poly on a high-end build like this is because this primer doesn't shrink like a 2K urethane high build would, giving us the ability to build up the surface enough to block everything flat, hopefully in one go around. Now this super build is very forgiving. You can lay it down heavy and usually in three coats. Man, that looks good. I'm sure glad I didn't have to do that. Up next, Dolph puts on the finish sand and we get closer to spraying some color. We're anxious to see it color and done. All right, day two. Yesterday was a big day. We got the Bronco in poly. Now we got to guide coat it, block it down, and make this thing straight. So let's not waste any time and get this thing going. The reason for guide coat is it gives you a gauge while sanding to find all your high and low spots. When you remove all the orange peel, which is the texture left behind from the application of primer, the surface is level. All right, well, we're pretty much done with 80. I just got this corner left because I've been taking my time making sure it's perfect. They kind of went around the truck pretty fast, but, you know. That's a solid C minus, but, you know, keep up the good work. Well, we got the rest of the truck re-guide coated and they're gonna go around with 180 to get all these 80 grit scratches out. I really love the taste of super build in the morning. Really gets me going. All right, so we're done with the 180 sandpaper. Now we're masking the truck back up so we can go ahead and put that finish sand on there. That's gonna be our last round of primer before we 320 and 400 and then we're ready for paint. I think we got it straight enough right now that we can uh, probably throw in two or three coats of finish sand and get uh, 320 and 400 and be ready to rock and roll with some paint then. Danny stole my tape. Finish sand is still a polyester primer, but it's a lot thinner than Superbuild. What Dolph is spraying right now is Finish sand. It's a hybrid polyester primer. It's less heavy than the Superbuild, but still a polyester, so it's gonna give us that nice finish, not as much orange peel to sand off like the high build. This finish sand isn't as high build as the super build because of how it's laying down. Yeah, it, uh, it came out slick, man. We got it down to 180 now, and this final finish ought to fill in any other minor little imperfections. Yeah, and that finish sand's uh, still a polyester, right? It is. It's just not as high as build as the super build. So, uh, you know, uh, we don't need the fill that we required previously. So, uh, we should be able to take this to 400, and even if we were doing a metallic or a pearl, we could run it to 600. Easily with, with just with finished sand. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you can tell it doesn't have as much orange peel as that super build. No, it's laying down much slicker. We're anxious to see it in color and done, you know? Uh, you guys are great, a great team. You guys work good together. And I'm glad you guys came out. The truck's looking great. Um, cool. I'm glad we could help, you know? And it was a great experience for these guys, you know, the first time here. Yeah. So, and I know they were stoked just to even be here and do this stuff. So. They busted their butt all week so far, you know. So it's going to be a lot of hard work. But in the end, when you see it on TV and you see the SEMA, man, be, Dolph will be like, yeah, I painted that. I was into that, you know. It's all worth it in the end. Right on. <laughs> Up next. Perfect technique. Won't spew any. I really like it. I think it's going to look good on the Bronco. Showtime.
All right, day three, we're done with 320. We're moving on to 400 grit, and we're gonna be doing that as our final sand. And one of the reasons why we can get away with 400 grit is because we're using a solid color, not a metallic or a pearl. Right, if we were shooting a metallic or a pearl, we'd carry it the whole way to 600 to ensure that those flakes or those pearls lay down evenly. So we're gonna knock this out with 400, blow it apart, get it cleaned up, slam it in the booth and make it shiny. Sweet, let's do it. During final sanding, you really want to focus on not flattening any of your radiuses or edges and keeping those body lines crisp. Before the body is fully prepped for paint, we want to double check fitment on the top so we don't run into problems down the road. All right, I'm coming down. All right, day four, we're pretty much done sanding on our Beach Cruiser Bronco. We're gonna be taking the front clip off, and I'm not gonna lie, we're gonna be throwing paint on this thing today. Don't worry, Brandon, we got this. Go get yourself a coffee. All right, well, I need energy. Let's go, out front. Let's walk out this side. There we go. Well, we destroyed that quick, didn't we? Uh, we're just putting some seam sealer in all these gaps and cracks here to, uh, prevent water from getting inside the truck and prevent rust. Well, anybody can paint if you have great bodywork and the gun is set up perfectly and the body works great and the temperature is great and the barometric pressure is great. What I'm gonna go over right now is proper spray pattern and what the adjustments are on the gun. Every gun is pretty much the same. This is kind of my weapon of choice right here. On the gun, we have a fan pattern, a fluid adjustment, and an air adjustment. I said most are the same. And all of them depend on each other. So we're gonna go over a couple pattern differences right here. See, that's a nice, big, even fan. That, I could narrow it down a little bit to make it a little tighter, just to show you how the pattern affects it. We can also, if we go with a more air, we get what we, or less air, you'll see it just spit out. And I'm going to extremes here. We crank up the air. You see how it's heavier on the top and the bottom. What's happening is we're blowing it past the air horns right now. And it's creating a heavy pattern on top and the bottom. So we'll cut the air a little back a little bit. Too much. To get a proper cigar shaped pattern. Now I'm a fast painter, so I want my fluid wide open and I want to control my speed for my pattern. So if, I'm, if you're a slow mover, you might want to uh, cut back on your volume a little bit and uh, so you're not dumping as much product on the panel. And in the booth we go. It just gives us a nice uniform base for coverage. This is our activator. Like I said, it's a four to one product. Once Dolph puts a cap on it, we're gonna load in the gun and rock and roll. Right now we're just doing a final tack and inspection, look for any little imperfections that we might have missed picking up any dust and contaminants. Just our last inspection before we seal it and get ready to put some base on it. I guess I did a pretty good job cleaning it up. All right, still fairly clean. The first step, sealer. All right, now that the sealer's dry, we're gonna mix up some of this uh, Caribbean turquoise chroma base and uh, get Chris back in the booth spray and turn this thing green. Perfect pour. Yeah, that's a, it's gonna look really good on that Bronco. Looks vintage. Uh, this is a slow base maker for the base coat, just basically to reduce it. It mixes one to one. Look at that, perfect technique. Don't spill any. I really like it. I think it's going to look good on the Bronco and kind of lend itself to the, the air it came from. It's going to look really good. And finally, this is the moment where a concept of the build becomes reality. Seeing this color on this Bronco is a reminder of where we're headed with this build and also the heritage of the Bronco. So yeah, this is pretty exciting.
All right, our base is on. That's gonna be the color and it looks amazing. Now we gotta get that clear on to make it shine. You guys are gonna tag team it, right? Right on, man. Dolph and I gotta get in there and uh, tag team that 72500 clear and make quick work of it. The clear coat we're using is as good as it gets. It's a high solids clear, which is gonna give us more UV protection and a deeper appearance than other clears. Up next, Brandon takes the reins on the clear coat and does a spectacular job. Well, thank you, Mark. Sure thing, buddy. Today's tip is all about fuel filtration. Now, when it comes to fuel filters, you've got a lot of different options from inline to canister style to filter regulator combinations. But let's talk about custom applications. Let's just say you're taking a carbureted vehicle and switching it over to EFI. You might want to use something like this Summit Racing filter regulator combo. What's nice about this is it's got the inlet and outlet, both quick connects, but then it's got a return back to the tank here and of course the filter built in. It even comes with a clamp and it looks like an OEM style filter, which is really nice if you're trying to do a clean install. But there's a lot of different other types of filters as well. Now, if you're gonna use an external pump, you need a pre-filter, usually around 100 micron, which is what this one is here. What's great about these is these are serviceable, and like this one's pretty small and easy to find places to mount. You can take it apart and replace this element here. What that does is that protects your fuel pump from getting any sediment in it that might have been settling in the tank. Here's another option. This one's actually got a little bit of a bigger filter and this one can mount on your frame rail. It's a little bigger, but it's also 100 micron. It's got a nice stainless filter. This one's made by Aeromotive. It's even got the fittings built in here. You can put whichever type of fitting you want if you want to do a nipple or if you want to do AN fittings, if you're building a race car or something like that. This is ideal for that. But then after your pump, you need a post filter, usually somewhere between five and 10 microns. Uh, you probably recognize this paper filter here. It's very dirty. This actually came off of our F-350 flatbed. This is uh, intended to catch all of the stuff before it gets to the engine. So you have to have a post filter and that's what actually protects your engine from all of the really, really fine elements that could get past your pump. Keep those from getting into your engine. Another different type of post filter would be like this one here. Again, like the others, this one is serviceable. So it's got a little uh, serviceable canister, uh, an element in here. This is actually a six micron filter. Uh, this one's nice and small too, so it's easy to mount. Has the AN fittings built right in there. So not all fuel filters are made the same. So it really depends on your application and what works best for you. All right, day five, the tub and doors are done. The bottom side of the hood's been painted. Looks good. I'm blown away by how nice this thing turned out. This is better than we ever imagined. So thank you guys for coming, but we're not done yet. No, we still have the fenders, the tailgate and the grill. So let's get this thing wrapped up and all the paintwork done. Hey, no, come back. Now this is where the styling cues of the early Bronco start to pop. The reason we picked this color, Caribbean Turquoise, is not only does it look cool, it was a factory option in 1966, the first year of the Bronco. Now that's cool. I love that color. That side of 5500X is really throwing a big fan and laying that color down nice. It's gonna look good. Well, I was able to persuade Chris to let me take the reins for the final coat to clear. Let's see if I can match his ability behind the gun.
Oh, yeah. That looks awesome. You guys done? About time you got here. Well, I know I joke about not doing any paint and body work, but I did chip in. I did some taping and I did some sweeping. And that's about it. So that means that the four of you guys did the rest and it looks absolutely amazing, Chris, you and your crew. Knocked it out of the park. I can't believe it looks this good. Well, I appreciate it, Mark. It's always a joy to be here at Power Nation. I'm fortunate to have the talented crew behind me that helped knock out this bad Bronco in one week. Yeah, I don't think the one and a half people we got would have been able to knock this out in five days. So Five years, maybe? Look, time's relative. Yeah, but that corner up there looks really good. Super straight. <laughs> Top of the fender as well. Well, I guess it's time for us to get out of here and get back to the big town of 96. Grab a couple cold ones. All right, I need a vacation. All right, I might as well go too, but I'll probably end up cleaning up first.